and I will trust it in you. You're the God of all flesh, and you can, you can do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can action or think. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Have your way in every mind today. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we'll give you the praise. Have your way, oh God, as we preach and declare the truth today. Anoint us afresh, oh God. Let your anointing destroy every yoke today. Let your power come. Sit on your help today. Sit on your strength today. Hallelujah to God. You're worthy to be praised, God. You're worthy of the glory and honor. Hallelujah. And we declare your righteousness today. Hallelujah. You are our God. And you're able to keep all that we entrust in your hand against that day. And Father, we'll give your name the glory. We'll give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Right where you are, I want you to give God praise. I want you to magnify him. Lift up his name. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. All is within me. Bless his holy name. Give God praise. Despite of your circumstance, open up your mouth and tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah. Declare right now that I'm going to give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Hallelujah. Because his name alone is worthy to be praised. Again, we thank God for allowing us to be in the presence of the Lord, to be here again, going before Declaring the word of God. This is the greater St. James Temple Church of God in Christ in the city of North Chicago, Illinois. And I'm Pastor Torrance Markham, oh, the, the under shepherd here of this great church. And we thank God for you who are tuning in, those in the congregation, those that are friends and well wishers that are tuning in and praying that God's word will go forth with power and anointing. It is the anointing that destroys the earth, not the personality. Not the uh, uh, individual, but it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. The power of God, he's able to do anything but fail. And I want to let you know that God is on your side. He's your help. He's your very present help in the time of trouble. So hold on. Stand with God. Trust in him. And he's able to bring you through. Just before we go into the word of the Lord, I'm going to ask Sister Mara saw Martha to come and she's going to sing a praise and get your heart in tune to receive the word of the Lord. And I want you to just worship the Lord. We worship him in spirit and in truth. And I want you to give God praise in, in spite of everything and in spite of what is happening, the circumstances of the virus and all that is occurring around us. God is a good God. I want you to say that with me, wherever you are. Say, God is a good God. He is a good God. And in spite of your circumstance, he's going to bring you out victorious. She's going to come and sing uh, praise and lift your heart up as we go to the word of the Lord on this morning. God bless you in the name of Jesus.
And they said, we're just like grasshoppers. But see, that was the wrong understanding. They should have compared the giants to their God. And they would have recognized that their God is greater than any giant. So through the giant of your circumstances, the giant of the condition that's happening around you, don't look at your circumstance as greater than you. Look at the God that's greater than your circumstance. He's able to bring you through. He's able to bring you out victorious because this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. I want you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Then we're going to go to the word of our Lord this morning. We pray that God will speak to your heart and say something that will encourage you. If you're living for the Lord and saved, we want to build up your faith. And if you haven't given your life to the Lord, we want to challenge you and let you know that Christ is the answer for you. Father, we thank you right now for your goodness, for your grace. Uh, we have nothing, oh God, but you have everything. And oh God, such as our have, we give in the name of Jesus for you to let your word go forth with power, anointing, and understanding. Oh God, we thank you for every ready heart, every willing mind that's listening to us on today. Those that are watching by Facebook or by our website, I pray that you would let your anointing touch them even now, wherever they are. Oh, let your glory be revealed in the name of Jesus. And word out of mouth that we'll say something that will edify you, that will glorify your name. And give us crying yes to you, and we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. We're going to go to the word of the Lord on this great morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice, and we're going to be glad that... In it, truly, God is a great God and greatly to be praised. And that's what I want you to do in spite of your circumstance. You know, the enemy wants you to feel defeated and down and depressed and bewildered. But that is why David said, I'll lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord. And I want you to know that uh, what David said in a natural sense is in a spiritual sense. We need to look to the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to look to him. He is able to do anything but fail. And he'll build you up. He'll encourage you. He'll strengthen you if you only just submit and say yes to him. In the epistle of Philippians, the first chapter, we'll be looking at one verse there, and that is the sixth verse of Philippians, uh, the first chapter. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Notice this. Paul speaks, and I, I want you to understand that he's not talking from his palatial home. He's not speaking from some restaurant sitting down writing this letter, this epistle. He's speaking from prison. But he wants to encourage the believer to strengthen them in the way of God. That's what I want you to do as a believer in Christ Jesus. I want you to know that God is greater and he's able to help you. We're, we're in this from start to finish. That's what we need to understand. We, we, we want to finish this race. We've started, and a great work has been started in us. We just celebrated on last week, and, and you know, people always sometimes get out of sort. Uh, we here at Greater St. James, we always declare this Resurrection Sunday. You know, some people get uptight with the word Easter, and we understand the colloquialism of it. But the fact of the matter is, Jesus died, he rose again from the grave. That's the bottom line. And because he lives, he gives us victory. He gives us a great salvation. The Hebrew writer in the second chapter spoke about how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? This is a great salvation because it's built on great promises, it's built by a great God, it's built by, hallelujah, his great son, Jesus Christ. 
And so we're in this from start to finish. We want to finish this race, hallelujah. And we want to hold on and build up our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever God has, has called, he's destined for it to grow. He's destined for it to flourish. And he begun it, and he's able, even through the test of times and the trials of life, he's able by his grace to anoint us even more, hallelujah, and take us and strengthen us through every step, through every trial, through every problem, he's going to take us from glory to glory. He's going to take us from faith to faith. Notice, I want you to understand my dear and sirs. This circumstance that we're going through is, is not just in terms of the judgment that God has declared because man has become so wayward, but it's also to build the faith of the believer, the trial of our faith. And so your faith should not become weaker. Your faith should not diminish now. Your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ ought to be getting stronger and stronger. Even if you're secluded in your home, your faith in the Lord ought to become, become stronger and stronger, hallelujah, because as you saturate your heart with the word of God and pray and seek him, he will build you up. Hey, glory to God. The gracious gift of this great salvation, hallelujah, has been planted in the, in the life of every believer. So notice now, Jesus Christ, hallelujah, because we believe. We're not, we're not saved, hallelujah, just because he did the finished work. The finished work has been done, but you have to believe it. You have to accept it. Hallelujah. You have to accept what the Lord has done for you through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And notice now, that work in you, hallelujah, will be performed. And what performing means that he's continuously working in us both the will and to do of God's good pleasure. Which means that his sanctification and his holiness, hallelujah, is working in our lives as we wait on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that sanctifying, setting us apart that we might be meek or we might be useful to God. Understand this, my dears and, and sirs. Sanctification is not a difficult word to understand. All it means is separating. And what the Lord does in the life of the individual, when he saves that person, he now sanctifies or sets them apart from the devil. You are no longer under the bondage of the enemy. You've been set free because you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But you also have to understand, my friends, that God has to work his sanctifying power in our lives daily. So we understand that as we study the word of God and meditate on this truth, that God is setting us apart that we might be used by him, that we might live for him. That might, the Bible lets us know, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset you. So many times the church now, and I really believe that God is working the world out of the church so that we'll be ready for the Lord to come. We become so entangled and, and so uh, 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 assimilated into the world, by I mean the ungodliness of the world, the behavior, the, the, the wickedness and the deceitfulness of the world until, hallelujah, you can't tell a believer from a non-believer. But what, was, what, what is happening now is separating, hallelujah, those who really and honestly trust God and letting them know you better hold on to God's unchanging hand. You better not lean on this world. Your confidence and your trust is in the Lord. Are you listening today? Jesus is coming back, my dear sir, and he's coming back after a believer, hallelujah, who is yielding themselves to the will of God. Hallelujah. Now Paul, he apostle to the Gentile, he wrote this epistle and he was in prison. And I want you to understand, although he was in prison, 
Although physically he was in prison, his heart and his mind and spirit, his soul was free. That's what I want you to understand. Wherever you are right now, hallelujah, you may have to be uh, staying at home, but your spirit and your soul is free to worship the Lord. I understand, and, and you know what? You who are believers and saved and sanctified and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, you love church. Every believer who really loves God loves to assemble with the saints of God. It's not a ritual to us. We're not just going through the motions. We understand that we're saved at home, but we're also saved among the believers. And so we miss the gathering together of the saints. Hey, glory to God, being together in fellowship and in love and in peace. Well, you know what? If, if you if, if you aren't saved and you like to go and party and go this and that, you're missing if you can't do it. Well, the saints miss coming to church and magnifying the Lord and praising the Lord, but we understand that we can yet praise him and magnify him and rejoice in him wherever we are. So if you're at home right now, you can be giving God the praise. Wherever you are, you got to go out in your car, you can be magnifying and rejoicing in the Lord because we know that he's with us always, even until the end of the world. So our circumstances and our conditions do not stop us from worshiping and praising the Lord because he is has started a good work in us and he's going to finish it. Notice, Paul is moved to encourage the believer. He, he wants the church to be perfected into the image of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This church came about from tremendous persecution and opposition in, the, in the Acts of the Apostles 16 chapter, the 11 through the 38 verse. We see that there was tremendous persecution that brought about this church. And that's what happens. You know what? Persecution even, even, either drives you to God or draws you away from God. And persecution really lets you know who's on the Lord's side. See, when everything's going good, and oh, every time you pray, you get what you want. You know what people feel like, oh, I'm comfortable and I'm all right. God is my uh, genie in heaven, and all I've got to do is, is rub the Bible and I'll get what I want. You come to realize when you go per through persecution that you don't get everything. Go through trials and tribulations, you don't get everything you want. But you know what? As you trust God and hold on to him, he's able to, to build you up. He's able to encourage you. He's able to strengthen your heart if you wait on him. Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Notice this. He thanks them, hallelujah, for their love and their financial support. Even while he was in prison, they financially supported the ministry that God had given to him. And even while in prison, and showered them with love and pastoral encouragement. So notice he's encouraging them while he himself is in prison. Notice, the work that had begun, had been done in their lives, hallelujah, was the work of deliverance and power. That's what I want you to understand. The greatest thing that God has done in the believer's life is to save us from our sins. Oh, my dears and sirs, the great work that God did through Jesus Christ was to destroy the yoke of the enemy in our hearts and minds and give us a mind to serve the Lord. I want you to understand that when we, we were born with the nature of Adam, a nature of rebelliousness, to go against God, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've gone into our own way. But God committed his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us and his death, hallelujah, was not in vain because he rose on the third day and all power is given unto him which means he has the power to deliver. It doesn't matter what has a person bound, what behavior, hallelujah, what lifestyle has them bound Jesus Christ is able to deliver them. Jesus Christ is able oh bless his high name to set the captive free. Can you say yes Lord today? Hallelujah. So no matter what the condition. God is continuously working in us the willing to do of his good pleasure. Hallelujah. God is working in the believer until the Lord Jesus Christ comes to gather the saints. Notice this. I want you to look at this. 
He that begun the good work in you. Notice the conception of that work of grace, hallelujah, that he's begun in us. The thing to the believer, hallelujah, on the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe. That's how it begins. We don't begin just because we join the Reformation or join the organization. We are in the church through Jesus Christ. He saved us. He set us free from the yoke of sin and bondage. In the uh, book of Acts, the 16th chapter, 30 through the 31st verse, is the Philippian jailer is here. And brought them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Notice, what had happened was, uh, Paul and Silas were in prison. God sent the earthquake and delivered them, shook them, and got them out of jail. Hallelujah. And I want to, what's so amazing about this is all the prisoners stayed too. There was enough anointing and power in the life of of Paul that all of the prisoners, they didn't run away. The prison opened, folks are not standing around to figure out what to do. They're running. But these men, all of them stayed. And when the jailer saw that all of the prisoners were all there, he said, what must I do to be saved? Notice, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he told him. He didn't say you had to clap your hands. He didn't say you had to sign this note. He didn't say that you have to be thrown in this water. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I want to let you know today. Right where you are, if you're not saved, all you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. All you have to do is say yes to him. Notice, when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we confess our sins. Hey, Lord and God, be faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's the new birth. We're born again. Jesus said in John 3 and 3, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Notice, new birth. Hallelujah. We've been born. Hallelujah. Not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible. Notice, we've been born again. Hallelujah. Born from within. Hey, glory to God. Christ Jesus has come in our life and saved us. Hey, glory to God. And we've been born into the family of God. That's why you can't get in the family unless you've been born in. Are you listening to me? And I'm not talking about, hallelujah, a reformation. I'm not talking about an organization. But you've got to be born into the family of God through the new birth that's in Jesus Christ. Are you listening today? Amen. Hallelujah. Notice now, so notice we've been born again. We believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. We confessed our sin. First of all, you got to know that he's a savior and that you're a sinner. We live in a day now where people want to blame everybody else for their messed up life. But I'm going to tell you, you need to blame yourself. You need to stop looking around. We have so many psychologists and and everyone is trying to tell people, well, your mother did it to you, your father did it to you, your sister, your brother. Everybody else did it to you but yourself. But I'm going to tell you, you need to really examine yourself and see, you know what, I, I did it myself. I went the wrong direction. I saw what God wanted in my life, but I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to live my own life. And so we need to come to realization is that if we want God, we got to confess that Jesus, you are Lord, and I need a Savior. And when you come to him, you got to confess your sin. You can't just say, you know, I did a little bit wrong, and, and you know what, I'm not as good as everybody else. No, you got to say, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. I need you to deliver me. And Jesus Christ, he's able to deliver you from the, from the guttermost to the uttermost. Can you say, yes, Lord? Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord is saying something on today. Then notice the walk, the work of, of believing, hallelujah. It, 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 no, listen to this. The work is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what it is? Jesus said in John 6 27, Jesus actually said unto them, This is the work of God. Listen to that. Listen to this. The work of God that ye believe on him that have said. You know what the work is? Believing. Now somebody say, oh, it's easy to believe. Oh, you got to hold on by faith. You got to continuously believe. So the work is to believe. And when you believe, hallelujah, your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, gives you power because Jesus gives you power to become the sons of God. And so notice now, he gives you a mind to serve him. A mind, see, a person won't live for God unless they
person have a mind to do it. Or a person can join the, the, the organization of the church and you can tell them all this and all of that. Hey, glory to God. But you know what? If they want to do what they want to do, they're going to do it. An uh, old preacher said, and I hold on to it, he said, you can take a pig and clean him up. You can put a brand new suit and tie on him. You can put the best cologne, the best shoes that you ever can purchase and do all of that to that pig. But when that pig sees slop, he's going to jump in because his nature has been changed. Oh, you ought to hear me today. When Christ comes in, he changes our nature to be sinful, to be rebellious, and gives us a nature to serve the Lord. Are you listening today? Hallelujah. In Romans 6, chapter 17, verse 8, But God be thanked that you thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart. There it is. Hey, go now. You got to obey this from the heart. Not just because, hallelujah, it's a ritual. Not just because you were in the church since you were born in the church. I'm going to tell you, you can be born and raised in the church and yet go to hell. Hey, go to God. Just because your parents are saved doesn't mean that it's osmosis and goes down to you. You got to accept the Lord Jesus for yourself. Sometimes people feel like, oh, my mama's praying for me. My, my daddy, my sister, my brother. No, you got to recognize, yes, they're praying for you. They're praying for you to be saved. But you got to accept the Lord Jesus for yourself. I wonder, do you hear me today? Hallelujah. Ye were, ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine or that gospel message or the good news that was delivered unto you. First Peter 1 and 23 said, being born again, oh, bless his high name. Thank God that we're born again through Jesus Christ. Not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So notice now, he's begun that good work in us. Hallelujah. He's begun it in us. So now, hallelujah, God, that which he has begun in us, he will perform it. Hallelujah. It will maturate. It will mature in us. It may notice now, it's a work that has begun because we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, God. That's the only way we can be saved. You can't be saved because you join an organization. You can't be saved because you do good things for people. You cannot be saved because you passed out flyers and all of that. You can't be saved, hallelujah, because uh, your, your parents are saved. You got to come to Jesus for yourself. You got to confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And that's how we're saved. And we're put in. Hallelujah. He's begun the good work. Now he is performing it. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That means it's a progressive work. Notice now he's performing it. It is a progressive work. And that progressive work has to deal with Jesus Christ setting us apart or sanctifying us. That's a hard word to deal with in this culture today because people feel like I can live any kind of lifestyle that I want to and yet have fellowship with God. But I mean, I beg to differ with you. God spoke out of heaven three times about his own son and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And you know why he was well pleased with Jesus? Because he did everything God told him to do. Now why would he be well pleased with his son that did everything he wanted to do and then turn around and be pleased with somebody that's doing what they want to do. You got to live for the Lord. Don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the enemy make you feel like, oh, you know, I'm all right with God. I'm here to tell you, if you're walking in sin, what is sin? Transgression, going against what God said. The way to the sin is death. If you're operating and functioning in a lifestyle, in a behavior that is against the will of God, against the word of, the word of God, and you can find it and, and it, it shows to you that this is not pleasing in God's sight, then you're walking against God and you're not pleasing him and you don't have fellowship with him. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. I wonder if you hear me today. Notice the progressive work of, of sanctification in the life through Jesus Christ. So continuously, as we read the word, as we meditate on the word of God, as we pray, you know what? We got to pray. Hey, glory to God. What, you know what Jesus said? He didn't say men ought to always preach. He didn't say men ought to always teach. He didn't say men ought to always go to church. He didn't say men ought to always read the Bible. He said men ought to always pray. Are you listening to me? 
And what's happening today is our, the circumstances that we're going through is giving us a prayer life. Are you listening to me? It's giving us to cry out to the Lord. And I, you should have had a prayer life. If you're saved, you should have already had a prayer life. But now, you need to turn it up now. Turn the volume up on your prayer. Are you listening to me today? Notice now, that progressive work of sanctification is, Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Notice what? Set your affections, your desires on things above, not on things of this earth. Now you can't do that unless Jesus is in your life. See, we have an affection for the world. When we're unsaved, when we don't live for the Lord, our affection is for the world and for ourselves. We want to please ourselves. We want to do everything that satisfies ourselves. So we live a self-centered life. But when we come to Jesus, now it is a selfless life. Which means that now we are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live. It's not I, but it's the Christ that's in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. Are you listening today? Hey, glory to God. Can we say yes, Lord? Hallelujah. Romans 2 and 10 says, for we are his workmanship. Thank you, Lord. God is working in us. Hallelujah. That workmanship uh, uh, denotes the fact that it's just like, a glory to God, an individual who writes a song, composes a song. Hey, glory to God. When that, that composer makes that song, he wants it to, to, to be beautiful, melodious. He wants everyone to enjoy it and receive uh, not only pleasure, but for it to enthuse and, and lift them up. That's the same way God is doing in our life. We are his workmanship. Hey, glory to God. He wants everyone to be blessed by our lives. He, want people, he wants people to come to know him through our lives. He wants individuals to know that God is real as we live for him. That is how God works in us. We are his workmanship, and what are we created unto? Hallelujah. We are, hallelujah, created in Jesus Christ unto good works. Notice this. The good works come because we're saved. We're saved unto good works. Our good works that we do does not save us, but because we are in Christ Jesus, now we're saved unto good works. Which means, hallelujah, we want to do the things that please the Lord. Are you listening to me? So many times people feel like, well, I'm all right. I'm not a drug addict. I, I, I'm not running out here doing this and I'm doing that and I do, do good and I give this and I give that but you know what? I'm going to tell you our works pale in comparison to the works of God and that's why we have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Hallelujah! Because we're not saved by works but we're saved by grace through faith and then whatever we do we do it unto God we don't do it to please ourselves. We don't do it to please others. We do it to please the Lord. Am I right about it today? Hallelujah. And then notice this. The producing work of, of salvation in the life through Jesus Christ. So notice, the producing work of, excuse me, of sanctification in the life. So Romans 6, 22. I want you to understand. Sanctification is being produced in the life of the individual. It's not just something that can come because somebody just feels good. Because really, if you, my dears and sirs, don't live for the Lord, you don't have a mind to live for him. What are, what are you talking about? When God changes our heart and mind, then we have a desire to please him. But if you are not living for the Lord, you're living for yourself. You may do it every once in a while, do something nice and all these kind of things, and feel like you're getting points with God. But I'm going to tell you, you got to come through Jesus Christ in order to have fellowship with him. In order to be in the family, you got to be born again. I wonder, do you hear me today? Can you say amen? Listen to this. Romans 6, 22 says, But now being made free from sin, notice, through Jesus Christ, and become servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. I want to be here today. My dears and sirs, this thing start, is starting in, a good work is starting in us, and he wants to finish it. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. And notice now, Paul says here, unto the day of Jesus Christ. There's going to be a completion of that work. 
of that work of grace, of that work of righteousness, is going to be a completion. What did you notice there? The expect expectation of the believer. Let me say that again. The expectation of the believer. Jesus said in the Gospel of John 14, chapter the third verse, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I'm going to tell you, the hope of the believer is to see Jesus face in peace. Now, all that we're going through, all of this crisis situation that's happening in us, happening to our homes, to our family, happening to us, I want you to understand, the ultimate goal of a true believer is to see the Lord. Now, we understand, we, you know, God has put life in us. He's put life in us. And we want to live. Nobody in their right mind wants to die. An individual has to allow the, the enemy to take control of their mind for them to want to destroy themselves. But I'm going to tell you, everybody wants to live. So he put life in all of us. Are you listening to me? But the believer has victory either way. We have victory if the Lord allows us to remain here on this earth. And we have victory if the Lord comes and takes us home. Either way, we are victorious. Because the believer's hope is to see the Lord Jesus in peace. And Jesus said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. Also in Acts, the first chapter, the 11th verse says, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner. That means Jesus is coming in the sky. I want you to understand, when Jesus comes back, hallelujah, to rapture or catch away the believer, he's going to meet everybody in the sky. In his second coming, when he comes to earth, after the great tribulation ends, and then the thousand year reign of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when it begins, he's going to physically come to earth. But when he gathers the saints together, he's going to gather the believer and snatch the church. We're going to be with him. We're going to be called away to be with him. And that is the hope of the believer. Notice the Bible says this. The angel said, he shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go to heaven. The same way Jesus went to heaven. Hallelujah. And in the heavenlies, the saints are going to be gathered together to meet him in the air. That ought to be your hope today. That ought to be your confidence today. To meet the Lord in peace. I mean, listen, all of us are going to meet him. But are you going to meet him in peace? Don't fool yourself. Don't let any of my kids and sir, you who are saved and living for the Lord, you hold on to the truth. Truth. Don't let the enemy deceive your mind and make you feel like what God's word said is not going to come to pass. Let all the world, all the earth, let man be a liar, but God's word is true. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as he is going away, he's coming back. You need to be ready if you're not. If you're not saved, haven't given your life to the Lord, you need to be ready when he comes. Are you listening today? Yeah. There's going to be a glorification for the believer. 2 Thessalonians 4, 16 18 said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, the trump of God. Hallelujah. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Remain shall be caught up together to meet him in the cloud. Now, I want you to understand this, my dear as a servant. Notice what the word of the Lord says this. It says here, hey, Lord, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Hallelujah. I'm not looking for a sign. I'm listening. Hallelujah. I'm listening for a shout. Hallelujah. The voice of the archangel, the trump of God, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Now, Paul, who wrote this second, this first Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18, he himself uh, uh, believed that he would be alive to see it. He said, we which are alive in the name shall be called up to be in the air. So notice, even in his generation, he was looking for the Lord to come. Every generation has been looking for and anticipating the Lord's coming. You know what? We're closer now than we've ever been. All of the signs that people see are pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ coming in glorious appearing. And I'm going to tell you, you need to be ready. You, you can't spend time getting ready. You need to be ready. 
How you listening to them? You can't spend time trying to get yourself ready. You need to be ready now. You need to be ready when the Lord comes. Are you listening to me? I want you to understand that we need to be committed. We need to have a committed life to him. We need to dedicate our all to him. We need to say yes to the Lord. We need to renounce the hidden works of darkness. We need to every area of our life that God is not pleased with. Don't fool yourself. You cannot tell me that you're full of the Holy Ghost and God doesn't speak to your spirit man and show you things he's not pleased with. Because he does show you. And you cannot argue with it. You cannot debate with it. You can't sit there and say, well, I'm all right because it's not like this and not like that. If it's something that God is not pleased with in your walk, in your talk, in your lifestyle, you know what? Say yes to God and give it up. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. We live in a day now where people just feel like that God it does like business individuals do, businessmen. He compromises. God doesn't compromise his word. His word will never fall to the ground. God honors his word above his name. And if God is a holy God, and he is a holy God, his word is holy, and he's not going to back off of his truth. So if he's not going to back up, he, you know what? We got to back up. We got to say, Lord, you have your way in my heart, in my mind, in my will. Can you say yes, Lord? Notice this. Commitment to go through every test and every trial. Now that's what we need. As we're going through this crisis situation and everybody's talking, Washington's talking, state government, city government is talking, you know what, I'm here to tell you, my dear sirs, they're trying their best, but they don't know what to do. Our hope and our hand, our, our, our trust is in the Lord. We need the help of the Lord. So as we're going through all of these grave tests and trials, I, I, I would also serve notice on you. You were going through something before all this happened. You had the trial of your faith before this was going on. You had trouble in your home, trouble with your family, trouble with your children, trouble on the job before all of this happened. So you know, hallelujah, what, how it feels to be in trouble. That's why you ought to know a God that's able to give you deliverance in the midst of your trouble. Are you listening to me today? Notice this. We ought to be committed to go through every test and every trial with the Lord. We ought to be committed. You ought to commit yourself today and say, Lord, I'm going through. I'm not going to go through complaining. I'm not going to go through murmuring. I'm not going to go through, in a, in a, in a, in a, as they call a pity party, in melancholy and feeling down. You know what? I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to tell you, you're going to make a way for me. You're going to open up a door for me. You're going to make sure I'm fed. You're going to make sure I stay in my home. You're going to make sure I have what I need, whatever I need, because you're the God that supplies all of my needs according to the riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. you got to speak faith, not doubt, not fear. Hallelujah. Because he's begun a good work in you. And he wants to complete that work. Hey, Lord God, you want to make it through. Hey, you want to get to the finish line. Hallelujah. And you want to get there victoriously. Are you listening today? Notice this. Paul said to his son in the gospel, Timothy, in the, uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 3, Thou therefore... Hallelujah. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Notice what Paul says to endure hardness. Go through this. Hallelujah. Go through this time that, that you may not have friends around you. Family can't come and be around you, but go through this time. Go through on your knees. Hey, you know what? Jesus is a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Jesus will be there when nobody else is able to be there. Jesus is right there. Hey, Lord God, the old saints used to say, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Hallelujah. Call him up and tell him what you want. Talk to the Lord. He wants to hear from you. And you know what? He'll send the Holy Ghost to encourage you and let you know that I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. Can you say, yes, Lord? Oh, I'm feeling good. I'm trying to control myself because, hallelujah, I want the word to go through and I want it to be rightly divided. I want you to go to, if you could, would, go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. The 5th chapter, the 16th through the 22nd verse. This is what we need to be doing right now. As he is, he is performing this good work in us, and he's going to finish it. Hallelujah. Hey, Lord God, we're going to meet Jesus Christ. Hey, Lord God, the Son of the living God, our Savior, our Lord. But while we're waiting, hallelujah, while we're tearing, while we're saying, even so come Lord Jesus, this is what we need to be doing. We need
need to first of all rejoice evermore. Hallelujah. We need to be rejoicing. What rejoice basically means is keep on having joy. Let joy just continuously be in your heart and in, in your mind. Just keep on rejoicing. When you go to the store, hallelujah, hey, glory to God, just keep on rejoicing. Hey, wonderful Savior, even if you don't have your stimulus package, keep on rejoicing. Hallelujah. Whatever trial that you're going through, keep on rejoicing. Notice this. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That means right now, in the midst of this virus, in the midst of the chaos that's around us, you ought to, as the Bible said, in everything, give it thanks. You ought to give thanks. You ought to walk around your house and thank you. You ought to thank him that you got a house to walk in. You ought to thank him, hallelujah, that you have a job to go to even in this turmoil. You ought to thank him that you got little finances around to keep you going. You ought to thank him, are you listening to me, instead of grumbling and complaining and murmuring and feeling like nobody's with you, you ought to be thanking the Lord. And the more you thank him, the more he comes in. Tell the Lord, thank you today. The more you thank him, the more he blesses you. The more you thank him, the more he encourages you. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You are right there. That's a praise right there. Wherever you are, I want you to clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. I want you to give him praise right where you are. Hey, wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. Tell him thank you. Wonderful Savior today. My soul to light in God today. Quench not the spirit. That means don't, don't allow the enemy it's going to make you doubt what God is saying by his word. The Holy Ghost it leads us and guides us into all truth. And the Holy Ghost will lead us according to what God's word says. So as the Holy Ghost works in you God's word, hallelujah, you hold on to it. Don't quench it. Don't hold it back. Let's just say, yes, Lord, I believe your word. How are you listening to me today? Despise not prophecy. Notice we ought to go to the word of God and see what God's word is saying about our circumstance today. And I'm going to tell you, my dears and sirs, let's hold on to the word. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see if they are of God. Understand, we live in a, a turbulent time now. And everybody's rising up with their own vain philosophies that's given by the slight of men. Everybody's rising up with their own thinking and their own teaching. But we need to hold on to what Jesus said. You know the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The truth doesn't bind you to sin. The truth doesn't keep you sin. The truth sets you free from sin. Are you listening to me today? Hallelujah. The truth, truth doesn't bind you to any temporal individual. The truth binds you to Jesus. Any truth that has you uh, honoring and worshiping anything or any person other than Jesus is not true. Are you listening today? So you need to know what God is saying about these, these times that we're in. What God is saying about your circumstance. And the only way to do that, you got to go to the word of God in prayer and supplication and fasting and seeking him and say, God, you speak over my life through your word. Are you listening? Then it says, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. And I'll just, I'll reiterate it again. You got to prove stuff by the word of God. You got to prove what's being said. Even when I'm preaching to you today, my dears and sirs, even to what I'm saying to you today, even to what you hear me say, don't go by because Pastor Martin said it. Don't go by because uh, Greater St. James is saying it. Get your Bible and read it for yourself and see what God is saying. See if those things are so. What's, what's happening in this time, we need to be going to the Word of God and hearing what God is saying. Turn off CNN. Turn MSNBC. Turn off all of these things that just are inundating our mind with doubt and fear and get the word out. Go through the Psalms and see that the Lord is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. Go through it and say, hey, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Can you say yes, Lord? Yes. Tell the Lord yes wherever you are. Hallelujah. And then notice, abstain from all the appearance of evil. 
That means anything that looks like it's giving honor and glory to anything else other than Jesus, stay away from me. Are you listening to me? We want to be ready when the Lord comes. We don't know when he's coming. Uh, and you know what? The Bible says this. At an hour when we think not. Now, everybody is focused on Jesus coming now because of the crisis we're going through. But there's going to come a time when everybody's mind is not going to be on the crisis and the Lord's going to come as a thief in the night. That's why he wants us to be ready. We've got to keep our hearts ready. Keep our hearts in tune to the Lord. Hallelujah. Keep our hearts encouraged in the Lord. Hallelujah. Anything that God is not pleased with, you say yes to the Lord. Those individuals that are around you, if they're talking things that, that is not in the word of God, you love them and you respect them, but you hold on to what God's word says so that you can say yes to the Lord so that when he comes back, you'll be ready to see him. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Can we say praise the Lord? Bow your head with me wherever you are under the sound of my voice here. I want you to bow your head. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. You, you, you've begun a good work in us, and you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And I ask, Lord, that just let that good work continue to work in our hearts and our minds. Give us crying yes to you, O oh God. Give us to renounce the hidden works of darkness. Hallelujah. Give us to lay aside every way and every sin that does so easily beset us, that we might run this place with patience. Hallelujah. Looking unto the Lord Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Oh, God, touch some heart and mind. That man, that woman, that young person, oh, God, that may be listening today, give them to say yes to you, Lord. Let your word fall on the good ground of their hearts. And be not just a hearer of your word, but a doer of your word. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for your healing. We ask, Lord, that you would touch us the uh, Angie Anderson's body, oh God, in the name of Jesus. So Mother Yolanda Lofton, that you would touch our body, in the name of Jesus. All of those, Lord, who've requested prayer, send your word of healing in the name of Jesus. It's by your stripes that we are healed, hallelujah, and we believe your word by faith. We thank you, Lord, that you're continuously healing our body and taking us through these trying times. We give you praise for it. Hallelujah. And oh God, bless the saints here. Those that are of Greater St. James, this family of believers, bless us, Lord. And then turn, Lord, and bless the saints everywhere. Every church that's calling on your name. Strengthen them, Lord. Make ways for your people and for your church in the name of Jesus. Oh God, and we'll give your name the glory. We'll give your name the praise. In Jesus' name, thank God. I want you to sing this song with me. Lord, let it be in me. Lord, let it be in me. Whatever it takes for me to live eternally. Lord, let it be in me. Lord, let it be in me. Jesus, and we praise God 
that the Lord has given us the opportunity to, de to declare the truth of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he's Lord to the glory of God the Father. And what Christ has is for you today. He has the peace that you need. He has the joy that you need. He has the hope that you need. Everything you need is in Jesus Christ. And I really want to encourage you to stay with the Lord. Hold on to him. He's able to see you through. You, my dears and sirs, who have been blessed on today by the word of the Lord, been blessed as we go forth here ministering the word of the Lord. I want to encourage you to let us be a blessing to the work of the Lord. Although we're in these troublesome times, and you have things that you have to take care of at your home and your place of abode. The church, the physical building, has to take care of responsibilities also. So as we give, we help support to keep the building going so that when we get back, everything will be in proper place. Because I believe the Lord's going to let us get back to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe that. I believe God is going to turn this away, turn this around by for his glory. He's going to do it for his glory. And all they can see that he's God. And so we want everything to be ready and proper when the saints come back and worship together in the house of the Lord. And the only way to do that is as we give, as we support. You can go on online. You can go on our webpage. We have Givelify. And we also have PayPal. You can give accordingly online. You can even download the app on your phone and look for Greater St. James Temple in North Chicago, and you'll see the church, and you'll see my wife and I's smiling face, and you'll be able to give and contribute to the work of the Lord. And also, you can give by way of mail. You can give a check or money order. You can mail it in to Greater St. James Temple, P.O. Box 1083. That's Post Office Box 1083. North Chicago, Illinois, 60064. We want we ask you to do that so that your gift will be secure. So as you give, you'll know it will reach its destination. So again, that's Greater St. James Temple, Post Office Box 1083, North Chicago, Illinois, 60064. God bless you, and we're going to continue to pray for you. We want you to be encouraged, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Should the Lord so bless, we will be coming back with our Bible study on Wednesday evening, and then also on Friday, should the Lord say the same, to declare the word of the Lord. And we want you to know that we have very capable uh, ministry team, they're going to be also working along with us. As I aforementioned, this is not a one-man operation. It takes all of us working together. I thank God for those over the ministry media who are working diligently to help us so that what you see will be a blessing to you. So we again thank God for you, and we pray that the word of the Lord has blessed and strengthened and encouraged you I pray that someone that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ will declare that I'm going to give up all to follow Jesus. Will say I'm going to confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead and I declare my salvation in Jesus Christ. Now Lord as we leave these airways, as we leave, oh God, those that are tuning in by way of conference call, we ask your grace upon them, Lord, that you will continue to crown them with wisdom. Make ways and open doors that no man can shut. God, we are in your hands and we are the sheep of your pasture. And we know that you're able to do anything but fail. Bless these your great people here, oh God, in their homes, in their places of abode. Give them the strength that they need. And now, Lord, we commend every soul to you. In the words of your grace, you're able to build us up and give us inheritance among them that are sanctified. And we'll be so careful to give you the glory and the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Jesus the Nazareth
Sinner condemned and unclean. 